Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchas, the mighty Migus Palmer, delighted to bring you Heroes of Might and Magic 2, the second game in the long running series of which I'm a big fan of, let's just put it this way. So this is a sequel to Heroes of Might and Magic 1, which I, well I'll be honest, I don't think I ever played one, but by the looks of it I wouldn't like it anyway, however Heroes 2 is a pretty good game. I mean, it was later, you know, shadow overshadowed by Heroes of Might and Magic 3, but it does not mean that Heroes of Might and Magic 2 is not good in its own right. And in this hopefully short-ish intro, I'll explain to you why. Obviously, this video cast is going to feature combat, because I am playing in a multiplayer against Games today, who decided to attack with his pathetic looking army, which could actually wipe me out because my army is not the best either. But we'll get back to that in a second. So the things that make Heroes 2 a little bit unique is that it's somewhere between Heroes 3 and Heroes 4 in terms of gameplay. For example, the economy is very much Heroes 4-ish. And the way that unit scale is also a little bit more like in Heroes 4, but other things are also clearly similar to Heroes 3. So let's go into my town skin to showcase more stuff to you. First of all, this is the Warlock's theme. I do like it a lot, I cannot lie, I do. And besides German Opera, kinda cool. It kinda cool is. And that's my English, absolutely pathetic, I know. So anyway, here's my main town, it's actually almost fully developed, actually it really really isn't, I only have a bunch of st uh, stuff, but I do have all my summoning uh, structures and they are all upgraded whenever possible. Now the thing is, in this game each town has access to six different creatures, but in your army you can only have five, so after you gain access to your sixth creature, you have to make a decision, which creature are you going to live in your town, and as a defender or whatnot, and what other creatures are you going to bring with your army and actually use them? Kind of neat idea, I mean, it's probably just an engine limitation or something along those lines, but it's still actually kind of fun to play this way. I'm not gonna lie, I do enjoy it. Also, the other thing is that, unlike in Heroes 3, not every unit is upgradable, only some of them are. For example, my cave, it generates uh, centaurs, and they are not upgradable. In fact, not a single tier 1 unit from any of those towns is upgradable, they are just your spam fest units that usually have some kind of structures that boost their increase in numbers. But my other creatures, for example, the tier 2 gargos, they are not upgradable either, but when we go to my minotaur kings, they are an upgrade of minotaurs, obviously. And the black, black dragons are actually kinda interesting because they are upgrade of red dragons who are upgraded versions of green dragons, so it's a double upgrade, something that not a single Heroes game has ever done afterwards, which I find uh, really saddening to be honest because I do like the mechanic of having more than one tier of upgrades. Two tiers is pretty cool in my opinion. So anyway, that's the only other differences that are so vastly majorly different from other games. Well, the economy, as I said, is different. In this game, you do not have like city hall and then town hall and no, it's the other way around. Whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. And here, the only thing you can do is make a statue which boosts your income by 250 gold per day. And that's that. As a warlock, I also have access to dungeon, which further increases my gold income because my units cost a lot of gold. Now, in terms of units I decided to leave in my castle, those are Hydras, very powerful, but they are also very slow. And this is a problem because very slow units, they tend to slow your army down significantly. And in this game, speed is also equal to initiative, so very slow units, they tend to take a long time when actually in combat, and that's a problem. That said, Hydras are very powerful still, so you know, don't look at them wrongly or anything. Now, I think those are the most pressing differences that I needed to explain to you. There are six towns in this game. Currently I can only show the two of you, the two, two, the only town I can show you is the one I've got because I've got two copies of it. I was fairly lucky to start next to another warlock town. There are six towns as I said, however, there is a necromancer town. Very powerful necromancers, as in every hero's games ever, apparently. There are the wizards and my enemy against is playing as the wizards. There is the Sorceress Town, which I thought I conquered, but apparently I did lose it. Actually, I'm going to conquer it just for a split second. I can conquer it, right? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, well, I should be able to conquer it. Yeah, just like that, just so I can show to, uh, show what is inside this town. It's a pretty neat looking town, and every town is in this game is pretty neat looking, and it does have a nice soundtrack because, hey, why not? Apparently people were in this 
Time lacked good soundtracks and they still do it. I'm not trying to say that people don't like good soundtracks nowadays. It's just in this game they are pretty, pretty interesting. So anyway, there is also what town did I miss? The barbarians and the knights who are the humans. And that's about it. Uh, generally, the game is interesting in terms of balance. It is very asymmetrical because of how some units are upgradable and some are not. As you can see, in Sorcerer's uh, Town, you can upgrade three units instead of the two, uh, like in my Warlock's Town. But they cannot upgrade their best unit. They can only recruit Phoenixes, and that's about it. Their second best unit, Unicorns, are also unupgradable. So it's a little bit of a downside, but then again, Phoenix, Phoenixes are really good for rushing, for example. You can get them early and they're very powerful in their own right. So, very interesting in terms of balance. But I've been talking for way too long already, and I think it is time to analyze our battle forces and then go into a battle so that you're not falling asleep when, wherever, whenever and wherever you are watching this video cast. So, this is my enemy's army. I can look exactly what the game say has. I don't have the spell that would allow me to do so, but I can see that he's got a mix of units from Wizards and Sorcerer's Town with a heavy focus on range units. He's got Archmages, who are very powerful range attackers. He's got Graded Druids, I believe, or just Druids, I don't even know, who are also very potent attackers. And a horde of Elves, who yet again are scary range attackers. He also brought in a pack of Boars and lots of Rocks. Rocks are powerful, but boars, they are very fast, don't get me wrong, they've got a decent attack and hit points. And actually, yeah, they're pretty good on their own, in their own right, although people often abandon the boars as defenders in Wizard's Town. Not always, sometimes. Just sometimes. Now, the problem with Gensler's arm, which means that I'm probably going to win, is that he's got a lot of ranged units. And my army is actually perfect at killing ranged units. I mean, I uh, in this game... Flying units, they've got unlimited movement, so those three of my units, they'll be able to attack the enemy very quickly and just block them and stop them from doing anything. It will be a disaster for Gensler. I've got, I also have Minotaurs, who are very powerful. Don't, you know, you better be careful when you find those guys because they are incredibly beefy. And Santeros, who can die to one enemy spell because they are fairly weak, but I do have them. Now, something I forgot to cover, just briefly before we go into combat, is that in this game... The skills also work differently, because in here there are no like skill trees or anything, it's not like you are a wizard and thus you can get access, after you get access to, for example, let's say wisdom, you get access to several sub abilities that you can grab for yourself, no, in here it's just like, you get a random choice of two skills when you level up, you pick one of them and that's it, they do not give you access to anything new, you can just level them up further, all the way up to the expert, which is one to third level of upgrade. So you can pick anything you want. I mean, as a wizard, I could have no problems getting necromancy, attack, or anything along those lines. It's not really a problem. Also, inventory in this game is not nearly as advanced in, as in the newer hero style. Also, you, can, you just have a certain amount of artifacts that you can carry, and those artifacts, it doesn't matter what they are, you just have them, and that's about it. So, skills you can probably recognize, luck, morale, stuff like that. It's all good. You can also change your formation to a grouped formation. No need for me to do that, but, and I definitely don't want to do this because I've got Black Drunkers and they do breathe fire. So anyway, without, without any further ado, I'm just going to stop this introduction and start the battle. Stay tuned. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the battle has officially commenced and Gensley somehow has the first strike, which is very surprising because Dragons are one of the two fastest units in the game. Wait, are they? Maybe they're not. Whatever, that's still very, very fast, so I'm really surprised that some stupid Archmages were able to get their first 10. Regardless, I can now have a good look at the numbers. The ranged attackers for Gainsley, they're actually pretty scary, but after, as soon as I block them with my dragons, griffins and gargoyles, they shouldn't pose much of a threat. And uh, the non-ranged attackers that Gainsley brought in, they are really just laughable. I mean, rocks are pretty good, they are pretty good. But Minotaur Kings will own them. Also, in case you are confused, the reason why in the previous video we were already... I mean, not the previous video, the previous part, my introduction bit, we were both already close to each other, I mean the players, is because Gensler, you know, just let me record my intro and then we reloaded the game because he had to sacrifice his stand to let me record an intro. Anyway, Gensler, 11 Griffins Parish, which is... Uh, Painful loss. So he didn't cast any spells, so I guess he's waiting for me to cast a spell so that later on he can actually, you know, dispel it. So I'm not gonna cast any buffs or casts or anything, I'm just gonna cast the good old Lightning Bolt. A very powerful spell. Unfortunately, this game never tells you how much damage you can expect from a spell, but I'm gonna cast it anyway. Now, 
I'm going to block those two guys with my Black Dragons, most likely, which it's very surprising that they are still unable to get the 10. Yeah, apparently everybody is very fast over here, so I hope that my Black Dragons will get the 10 soon, but apparently I better not risk it. So I'm just gonna cast my Lightning Strike at the Graded Druids and hope for the best, I think. Just like that. Lightning like Strike, it's very beefy, I do like it. And it's a very powerful spell as well. Now, those guys, they have a lot of movement speed. I could care less. Uh, my Manatos should be able to absolutely annihilate the boars. They're just here for the shell. Because 19 boars, they are tier 2 unit, unupgraded and unupgradable against an upgraded tier 4 unit. No a chance. They attack, they get killed, as simple as that. The best gains that I can do with them is just waste my counter attack and then also attack over rock. So, ooh, that was a fireball. It looked like. Not just a power of blood exploding randomly on in the middle of the field, but it was actually a fireball. <laughs> you know, it is an older game afterward, and uh, after all, so you know you can expect this kind of things. Also, my music stopped. This is my personal bug in this game that know why it happens, but I do have an emergency plan for this. So, come on. Okay, I hope it's not too loud. In case you're wondering what's happening, it's actually my iTunes with the game music because I discovered that this thing, sort of thing happens, so yeah. Anyway, who am I going to attack with my uh, Gango? So obviously the Greater Druids. My Dragon still doesn't have the 10, which is highly annoying, but there isn't much I can do about that. I lost uh, more Gangos than against the lost Greater Druids, but at least they cannot attack from a distance, and then this would have been a disaster if they could because they can just pack a ton of damage, so. And that's why my army countered against this army quite well, because it is actually a ranged army against a flying army. Not the best of choices. Also, it's now the turn for my dragons. I could attack the rocks, because right now those elves, they are blocked, they are not going to be able to do much anyway. So let's attack the rocks and make sure that this threat is not a big threat after all. And I got good luck as well, holy totally though. And only 10 rocks perish, they are actually more beefy than I expected them to be. But it's not a really big problem anyway, since the biggest enemy threat that being the ranger attacking units, are already dealt with, per se. They are still alive, but they cannot do much, so, you know, it doesn't matter. Started attacking the great, the art mages, obviously, that's because I attacked them with my griffins, and then I don't want to suffer too many casualties when using my griffins to attack the art mages. Art mages are actually one of the two units in this game that do not suffer from melee attacks, so even when they attack in melee, they still will get their full damage potential, which is powerful. Also have more, uh, one third of my centers perish, more than that in fact. Because they're just kind of bad. That's how the game rolls sometimes. T1 units, they generally die by the hundreds. And they are only here for, you know, the early game. You can use the late game as well if you, got, if you really do have a ton of them. But other than that, they are not really all that powerful. And they are just a meat shield at best. Right now, it, they... The Austin just did fall against Lay to waste his 10 on rocks, and ooh, I'm dead. So I guess I casted a blind spell, now the problem with my hero is, I barely got any spells, I don't have any dispels, I cannot actually remove the blind effect. So this is very smart by guessing. oh, you almost always get the dispel spell, okay? Which allows you to get rid of enemy spells on your units or enemy units. I did it, I was really unlucky, so this is going to hurt me. A great deal, as you might imagine. I could cast it. No, I cannot cast the landing vault on my own unit, unfortunately. Anyway, let's actually attack the greater druids, I think. Keep weakening them because, you know, they actually can deal with my gargoyles at some, uh, you know, after some time because, you know, they're actually kind of powerful. Anyway, I was supposed to say something, but I don't really remember what it was. Who's that? Oh, my black dragons. Yeah, well. I do need to stand over here to block uh, the Archmages because my Manato Kings are never going to be able to do anything useful ever again. So let's just stand over here and uh, flame the Archmages. And good luck again! I do have a ton of uh, luck modifiers on my hero. So guess I will complain that I'm very lucky with my good luck. Indeed I am, but that's because of my artifacts. Also, guess I started to think he's now moving his range units apart from each other so that I cannot block them all at once. And oh, that was so lucky! He got the high morale, so he can now actually fire with his elves and deal a decent amount of damage, though... Actually, I only have 32 hit points left on my Black Dragon. I'm going to lose some of those guys, but there isn't much I can really do about that, unfortunately. Now, my centers, they cannot go anywhere, so I'm just going to attack the rocks. I'm going to lose a ton of my... Hey, what happened? Okay, that was just a little bit of luck. And speaking of luck, I got luck. 
not to confuse one thing with the other. And now is probably the time when the rocks finish my centers, or they could actually go for something else entirely. Now, most of all, uh, my army is pretty much gone. By that, I mean my griffins are gone, my centers are worthless, and the only thing I've still got going for me are the black dragons. And in fact, I think that I might be in a lot of trouble because those guys that really my damage dealers, very powerful units, but without them, all of a sudden I'm pretty weak. So I need to f do something about that, otherwise I'm in a ton of trouble. Also, I forgot to cast my spell, which isn't going to help. Let's just put it this way. Anyway, how many. Archmages that I guess they have. I have no idea. They're probably just going to sit here and do nothing because if they attack a black dragon, well, they would actually do some damage. I don't know how much though, because I don't know how many Archmages against this they have. Unfortunately, this game doesn't handle the UI too well. Obviously, you cannot tell how many Archmages there are because their number is obstructed by my black dragons. It just, it does happen sometimes. Anyway, the thing is that, that I should point out, Ensei was the attacker, and ooh, that's going to hurt a lot. I need to do something about the elves. But anyway, Ensei was the attacker, and that's why my army is pathetic. In fact, this army I sent is not an army that I want to conquer anything with. Oh, he just did an attack with uh, Archimedes. It's probably smart. Anyway, the reason why this army is here is just I was scanning around. I also found this defenseless uh, castle that seemed defenseless at the very least. So I was like, yeah, I might as well attack it which seemed like a good idea at the time, and I still think it was a good idea, except there was a very powerful enemy here nearby. So anyway, how many Archmages are there? Only three left, really no reason to bother with them at this point in time, so let's just fly to the elves, make sure they don't do any more major damage to me. My Black Dragons are taking a pounding, and as soon as they go down to like two Black Dragons, that's when things go really dicey, but you know, there isn't much I can do about this. Now, the good thing is that at some point in time, the blind spell from Malator Kings, it will go away, but until that happens, I, you know, I'm not in the best of spots. Let's just put it this way, because obviously things could go better. Fortunately, I can continuously try to block against Slayer uh, attacks, which is what I'm trying to do. Now, what do I want to do next? Uh... I have no idea your guess is as good as mine. I guess I could just use uh, the center to later on block the Archmages or the Just Force against Slayer to waste his attack on the killing of my centers, which probably should be a pretty good idea by itself. Anyway, I'm actually kinda happy. I thought this was going to be an Annihilation where I just own against him, but he did have a lot of those raged attackers, more than I expected, so he did quite well for himself. Also, Gensler is now smart, he realized that those Gygos are the key of to my success. Without them, I cannot block the enemy range attackers efficiently. So, you know, that's about that. So, let's just cast Landing Bolt on the Greater Druids, make sure that they're actually all dead. And that's where things start to go really cool. I could attack the Archmages, I'm not sure if I would be able to survive this though. I should, I do have 11 Gargos left, they are not the best unit, they are 2 2 that is supposed to do a lot of hit and run attacks, but as you can see they could actually stand, they can actually stand their own in a fight, and they successfully blocked the Archmages. I'm actually really enjoying this battle, I don't know about you guys, but I am, and ooh, bye bye Sanderos, you are nice. So anyway, Black Dragons obviously got to finish off the Great Elves, or Grand Elves or whatever. Yeah, Grand Elves indeed. There are still some of them alive, which is kind of surprising. But I still have three dragons. Even if I'm going to lose another dragon soon, I don't think there's anything that against I can do to make a comeback. But I still have to hand it to him. He did pretty well. I mean, blinding those Minotaurs was definitely a key to his success. My hero, unfortunately, has barely taken no spells. I was unlucky. And uh, at the time when he was... The last time this guy was in a city, he was just unable... I was unable to purchase better levels of uh, Mage Guild. So I couldn't get any more spells, which would have even the battle. And by even, I mean this would be an annihilation like it's supposed to be. Right now, however, it is kind of even by the fact that I do not have access to good spells. As a warlock, it is usually a big setback because warlocks do rely on spells, obviously. But I was still able to win it because my army kind of did counter the Gensler's army quite efficiently. I have to admit. I'm really surprised he did decide to attack me, but then again, as we can see, it is actually a much closer fight than one could expect. If only guess they had something better instead of those balls, then he would have been actually able to kill me most likely. And the rocks are still here and they are doing pretty well. And now they also have steel skin, a very powerful spell. Do not underestimate it. Anyway, I do have lightning bolt, however. So can I finish off those grand elves? Probably. Definitely. <laughs> the grand elves uh, have perished. And now it's time to actually go ahead and deal some damage to the 
mages. In fact, I didn't have to do this because, oh, well, actually I did, because it's now the 10. If I haven't, then those guys could attack my dragons from distance, which is some damage that I would rather avoid. But the thing is, oh, guess I did the move, that's kind of nice, because now I can fly in and attack two units at once. If I attack from the proper angle, I'm not sure which angle is the proper one. I think this should do it though, so let's hope that this is indeed the case and I'm not going to ban my goggles. I did it, even though it looked like I did, but I didn't, so it's all good in the neighborhood. Now, the boss are going to do basically no damage, even to my goggles, that's kind of a sad state of affairs. But balls are just balls. they are like goggles except worse because they cannot fly or anything. Anyway, guess I realized the weakness of my hero, the lack, to, the lack of the spell, and he's buffing those rocks to infinity, and they are going to be a worthy challenger to my black dragons, but nowhere near good enough. They still have 114 life left, and guess I basically has nothing else left. And also, I can make guess I waste his counter attack with my goggles, and I did, it did cost me all my goggles, but now when I attack the rocks with my black dragons, the rocks will not be able to counterattack, and this is good for everyone involved, especially me. It is actually probably not too good for Gensei, and I could have landing board those rocks so that Gensei would die, but whatever, it happens. I'm still rather satisfied with what happened, and of course, it had to landing board my Manatars to deal some damage to them. They're not longer blinded, but it obviously doesn't matter anymore. So I can make it to the rocks in one turn with Manatars, and I don't have enough mana for landing board. But I need to have enough for a cold ray. Be ready for a really random weird sound effect. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> anyway, those guys just stand in the middle so they can read pretty much anything. And Black Dragons, it's time to own. Thank you. I love Black Dragons. In every game I do. Anyway. Okay, I can now stop I choose from playing. <laughs> and we've got I end experience. Killed a bunch of stuff. I'm also going to... Gain a medal of catch that against I actually had, pendant of full will. And apparently that's about it, because against that it's something that I wasn't able to look through all my artifacts, which was mildly annoying. Anyway, basically leadership or eagle eye. Eagle eye would actually be kinda decent. It would be kinda decent, but I'm gonna go for leadership because getting better, better morale is pretty good. Also, I think that Gensei also had I don't know, what what was it? It was some kind of tax. It was a cast artifact, because in this game there are cast artifacts. He picked one up and he, from what I gathered, he did put it on the hero he used to attack me. So now that I've won with this hero, I've got his artifact, including the tax thingy, and I'll lose more gold per 10 as a result. It happens, it does happen, but it's yet another kind of cool mechanic, though it does need some tweaking, because right now it's just a mild annoyance that forces you to sacrifice your heroes to no show guardians or something. Anyway, something I also didn't cover, I think I can probably end this cast relatively soon, but also one thing I didn't cover just yet is the fact that there are multiple classes in this game, like in other Heroes games, but they don't have any specific bonuses. It's just that they start with a certain amount and type of uh, abilities that you here already have from the get-go. For example, Necromancer obviously has a Necromancy skill unlocked, but Baron has something I don't remember what he has, but he doesn't have with any spellbooks. My guys already start with spellbooks, but they have pretty rubbish uh, things unlocked, like, I don't know, navigation or something, or maybe it was exploration, I don't remember, something pretty bad. But regardless, I guess Gensei will not end his turn and let me actually show you the artifacts I got, so that's good enough, I guess. Thank you very much for watching. It was Pantras to the Mighty Mix Power. If you somehow managed to enjoy my video cast, then you maybe could subscribe because I will post more Heroes of Mighty Magic videos. I do love the series and I try to post videos of the series as often as humanly possible. Let's have a quick look at the artifacts I've got. Yeah, there we go. No, wait, that's a formal scroll. Oh, there we go. Tax <laughs> Yeah, I don't need to get rid of that. Anyway. As I said, subscribe if you want to see more heroes, and I'm basically trying to show you every hero's game I can. Not Hero 6, because it, there's this expansion to it, which I do not approve, and whatnot. And not Heroes 1, because I actually do not like this game, it's too old, it would be difficult to record and whatnot. Anything else, however, I will still try to continue uploading on my channel, so you can account for that. Anything else? Yes, comments help me a lot, I like reading them. Likes also help, although I obviously cannot read them because there's nothing to read about them. Thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you online.